Well, hello, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. I know, I know. It, it, it's hard to contain yourself. All the excitement. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm really excited about our show. We've got great guests on the show. Normally, we don't have guests of this caliber, um, but uh, today, is, today is really special. Um, but first... But first, uh, we we got to get we got to get the monologue-y stuff out of the way and the newsy stuff out of the way. Uh, first off, you need to know, um, number one, this show is a giant infomercial. It's an infomercial. It's a lot of info and a little bit of commercial. And let me get the commercial out of the way so we can get to the info, get to the good stuff. Um, but uh, the the commercial part is that um, PTZ Optics cameras, the camera guys. Um, all their new cameras are coming out ready for NDI. And if you would like, if you already have a PTZ Optics camera, that the serial number starts in a 7, and it's a Generation 2, and it has PoE, power over Ethernet, then you are probably el eligible for this upgrade. The upgrade regular price is $600. It is on special until sometime in September, unknown date. Um, for three hundred dollars, and it's a it's a pre-sale kind of thing. I mean, it, you don't get it right now, but you'll get it in in September. You can go to our website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, and get it there. You can go to PDC Optics and get it from them directly. Same price either way, but you get me with it. By the way, we're also an authorized VMix reseller. We resell for PTZ Optics, Magewells, X Keys, and we've got two more lines that we're looking at that we hope to have on soon. Um, Oh, by the way, go to the vMix forum, and that's, oh, I don't have a URL for it, so you'll just have to write it down. It's forums, plural, forums.vmix.com, and look in there for the open source Wi-Fi tally light project. Yes, tally lights that run on Wi-Fi. You, you need to take a look at that. And that's uh, forums.vmix.com. Somebody has, has worked on that on the side. It's kind of a plug-in for vMix. But if you're interested in tally lights and you don't want to run a lot of wires, a lot of cables and cords, then the Wi-Fi tally light, light project may be for you. And the, by the way, the vMix forum is a great source of information about vMix. And speaking of great sources, a great source for information about streaming in general is gonna be our, right, right down there at the bottom, our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash streaming idiots. And there are about 800 folks in this group. There's a chat going on virtually 24 seven about streaming and cameras and software and PCs and microphones and CDNs and internet and all the different piece parts that make up a great stream. So if you are interested in that, come on over, join the group, and we'd love to have you. The, uh, the big announcement that's coming down the pike today, it's not my announcement, but Magewell, the capture card folks, uh, are also known for their uh, USB 3, uh, HDMI, and SDI dongles. Well, they have just introduced today, I don't think it's shipping yet, but they've introduced today a 4K dongle. That's right, 4K over USB 3. I can't wait to get my hands on one. When I do, I'll review it here so you can see it, and we'll be putting those in our store as well, too. Coming up in September, you know we have our own line of live streaming gear that we build here. Some of it's custom built for the customer. Some of it's off the shelf. You can go to our website and find out more about it. But coming up in September, when you buy live streaming gear, PC from us, you get a free X keys with it. And you know how we love our X keys. Um, VMix 20 is in beta right now. It's slated to be released maybe next month. So keep your eye out for that. And oh, I know last but not least, uh, we have in the studio, you can see it over my shoulder, slightly out of focus, a bird dog from the guys at Bird Dog TV. And we did a test yesterday on the latency with that and found out that the bird dog is, uh, what is that, you know, 80, 70 milliseconds, somebody do the math for me, uh, 60 or 70 milliseconds, now that would be more like 72 milliseconds behind SDI. Um, so that's um, a frame, a frame and a half maybe, maybe two frames. 
Um, we'll be doing some more testing with that. In fact, not only will we do, be doing more testing with it, we have the creator of Bird Dog TV on the show next week. That's Wednesday, um, August 30th. Dan Mial from Bird Dog will be here to talk to, more, to us more about Bird Dog. Um, oh, one other thing. Don't forget, we have in our store these really cool uh, frames, and we'll be using one in just a second. You know, just little frames that chop the screen up so you can put different cameras in, in different piece parts. And they're uh, $29.99. That's $29.99 for about 200 of them. All sorts of shapes and sizes and colors and thicknesses. And uh, <laughs> somebody said in the chat room, Tom's calculations are not good. <laughs> we were having trouble with that in pre-show. Um, but that's in, that's in the store, too. Uh, under graphics. So take a look at that and, uh, and I commend it to you. The, um, the, I, I guess today is, is Larry Megan and Larry has with him, um, his, his assistant and, and, and Ronnie is with him today, but Larry is one of these guys that has done so many amazing things, and I'm not BSing you. I mean, normally <laughs> you're, th you're thinking, come on, Tom, come on, Tom, tell us the truth. Seriously, I'm not BSing you. Normally I would BS you a little bit, but Larry is one of these guys that's done so many amazing different kinds of things. I mean, he was a, he, he had his own, um, he had his own communication company. Uh, he was a uh, NFL football players rep. Uh, he he was a a, a pitch man on on QV, QVC and Shop NBC. He uh, he now does a show called or 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 has a network called Night Owl TV, and in that he does a show about watches. But he also is president of a watch company called Sterling Watches. Oh, excuse me, Sterling Originals. So we're gonna with with very little further ado because I've probably screwed up at least a portion of it. I want to bring. Uh, Larry and, and Ronnie into the show. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show, guys. Glad to have you. Larry and Ronnie, glad to have you in the house. How's it going? Hey, Tom. Thank you so much for the introduction. There is a few corrections I could make, but I'm going to let it all go except one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Ronnie is not my assistant, okay? <laughs> Ronnie is the studio engineer. Uh, you know, without Ronnie, I could not have cannot do all the things that we do he's been with me for six and a half years so he's really more that he's not my assistant okay awesome oh, thanks larry awesome. <laughs> that's the only thing i'm going to correct all the other stuff who cares i got you okay so you just keep ronnie around for good okay. looks i understand i understand all right so so larry let's start out just a little bit ronnie you chime in too but larry this whole live streaming gig i mean the whole live streaming idea when did this first sort of show up on your radar when did you become aware of it and think that this is something you wanted to do? Well, uh, great question. Um, man, you know, starting off with the fact that I've been in home shopping television since 1996. Um, of course, back then the internet was maybe just being born, at least for the public anyway. So we didn't pay too much attention to it back then. But I think right from the beginning, you know, or a year in maybe, and I've been in it for, you know, many, many years, it's referred to as DRTV, direct response television. Um, you always get the wheels turning, you know, you start thinking about, you know, could I do my own show, you know, and, and have my own uh, shopping show on cable TV and everything is geared towards cable TV. And then you start looking at things like, well, uh, you know, you need a transponder. Well, a transponder is $150,000 a month with a two-year commitment up front, you know, so that's out. Um, you know, well, maybe I can rent time on a transponder. We use a link farm and send a signal up to the transponder. And then, well, now you got to have uh, CSOs, cable system <laughs> operators, pick up your signal. And that costs, you know, a buck to two bucks per sub per year. So, I mean, that you need, you know, deep pockets. And so you start thinking about cable TV. And, and this has been going on for years. And, you know, as time has been passing on, 2005, 2006, 2007, the internet becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's gotten to the point. And I know it's we're still in the in the beginning. I know that, but you know, you start realizing that everybody has computers, everybody has eyeballs on the uh, TV screen on the computer, and you start realizing, wait a minute, what about just doing it on the internet and forget cable TV? 
you think, you know, that, that's that got to be cheap. You know, forget about cable TV. We can always add that later once we make millions of dollars. And somewhere along the line of about 2010, uh, you know, I, I got this idea, what I wanted to do, and I had by that point I had been in home shopping for many, many years. So I've been on, like you mentioned, QVC and small stations and a, uh, Shop NBC and JTV and Shop at Home and the Shopping Channel in Canada. I can't even remember them all, you know. Um, you know, I started thinking, I'm going to do something special. We're going to do home shopping for the rich. We're not going to sell a little $99 stuff. And it's ironic that I'm saying that now, Tom, because, you know, on our show now on Night Owl TV on Sterling Underground, we're selling lots of items under $100. But, you know, we're just kind of using it to build our infrastructure. The point is, I started thinking about doing a show and home shopping for the rich would be, you know, Items 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, 20,000, 8,000, you know, high end jewelry, high end watches, which I do have access to. And I started looking, and, you know, the idea of the format of the show was going to be home shopping, but not in the traditional sense that we see it on television. It was going to be more like uh, shopping, but mixed with entertainment. So instead of showing 10 to 12 items in an hour, you might only show one or two, and you might have some entertainment and musicians and things like that, and wrap it in entertainment and target it towards very rich people. So, you know, I started looking to put a package together and get a, a studio. And all the while, I'm at that point president of Sterling Original, which is a watch company. And my boss was very, very supportive, and he still is to this day um, in New York. And you know, uh, a, a person who was working with me, she was a PR lady, said, Larry, I saw an ad on Craigslist that had a webcast studio out in Port Jefferson. At this time, I was living in, in New York at that time. And so I said, well, I'll go check it out. And it was really cheap. So I went out there. And as soon as I walked in the door, I knew this studio is not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of a big studio with, because that's, I worked in big studios with a room for a, a band and all this kind of stuff. And this was a little room. I mean, literally, it was in a commercial building, but it was a small webcast studio using webcams in a small room. And the two guys were young rockers, and they were nice guys. I'm still friends with them today. Their channel is called Zidalza. They're out of New York. And I looked at it. I said, oh, guys, this is not what I'm looking for. Well, why not? Why can't you use this place? Well, I'm looking for a bigger studio and proper cameras and all this stuff. So I said, you know, though, what might be kind of fun I said, maybe, I said, it might be kind of fun just to do a sports talk show, which is not what I was went there to look for. I'm thinking about doing this entertainment show with jazz music and home shopping for the rich, and I just want to put my package together. But I see this little studio with a desk and some webcams, and they got it really together. I said, it might be fun to do a sports talk show. I'm very, you know, uh, knowledgeable in sports, active in sports, football, baseball, basketball. It might be kind of fun. So what do you charge? And the guy says, well, you get one show a week for an hour a week, and we give you a package of 12 shows for a 1000 bucks, and we make a, an intro for you and everything. I said, are you kidding me? 12 shows for a 1000 bucks? He said, yeah. And on the wall, he had a, a, a you know, like a, a big, you know, chalkboard. Not a chalkboard, but, you know, a grease board, you know? And he's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and he's got the hours, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., and it goes up to 10 p.m., and uh, I guess the last show is, goes 9 to 10. And uh, I said, well, if I were to do it, could I do it at 10 and go from 10 to 11? Because 9 is too Chest. Uh-oh. We're having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here. Um, we may have to ask Larry and Ronnie to step back their video to, uh, to 720. Let's see if they if we've lost them all together. Yep. Test check one, two, three. Looks like we may be having some streaming problems of our own. Let's see. Hang on a second here, folks. We're going to do some quick diagnostics and see what we're seeing. Looks like we are suffering either some server problems at YouTube or, or we have an internet outage or slow 
slowage somewhere. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's go back hit and we'll try to hook back up with Larry in just a second. Um, f fascinating stories. Uh, you know, can you imagine 12, <laughs> 12, 12, 12 one hour uh, shows for a thousand dollars and they probably thought it was too much. Yeah, it looks like we're we're having some problems here. Hold on a second. Folks in the chat room are saying we're offline. We're going to stop our stream here for just one second and we'll restart it. Uh, we're going to let the recording keep going. So if you're watching us on the recording, uh, bear with us for just a bit and um, and we will uh, try to get this fixed real quick. And we are using a beta of the uh, of the software. So let's see. Let's see if we got back on now. And if we can uh, get hooked back up with Larry. And, you know, if all else fails, this is an internet show. Let's give him a call. <laughs> Hang on a second. See if we can negotiate this. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Larry. Larry, Tom Sinclair. Yeah, we, we lost. See if, see if you can hook back up again. Honey's trying. Okay, there we go. There we go. We're good. Okay, we're back. We're anyway, back. So it, it started off as a sports talk show, and and then it blossomed into something else. And then I had to move to Minneapolis, and I couldn't find a webcast studio, and I built my own. And I found Ronnie, and he's been with me for six and a half years. <laughs> I, I mean, there's more to it, but, you know, you'll find out. If you ask me, I'm going to give it to you. Well, no, that's great. That's great. And and I apologize for that, for the outage. I'm not sure what happened. My, I think my internet hiccuped here. That is the That'll weak happen. link in all of this yeah. uh, live stream and stuff. If all of a sudden mm -hmm. you have an internet issue, um, you know, it's hard to have a backup internet, um, especially yeah. at high speeds. All right. So, so you, you're doing that, you're doing the webcast thing and, and, and Ronnie is coming on board. And, yeah. and and tell me the rest of this story because because it's the five dollar part that I want to get to. That's where we're that's where we're going to end this conversation because that's the meat of the it. I think the the five dollar um, not $5 sure what that means. Uh, the five dollar server. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's talking about Beluga. I know where he's going. Yeah. Down. Okay. Yeah, um, Beluga. Well, right. I, I, well, I met Ronnie when I first moved to Minneapolis, and I had to move for my job. Okay. Um, my first 17 shows were with the studio I was renting in uh, Port Chester called Zadalza, and it was really cheap. He charged me a thousand bucks for 12 shows. Um, but when I moved, I tried to find a webcast studio out here in Minneapolis. Could not find anything. Anything. Everything was TV studios, and you know what those go for. Um, so I, I said I decided I'm going to just build my own, you know, right here in my in my home, and I put it out on Craigslist, and I got about I don't know, ten or fifteen responses, and I narrowed it down to five. And Ronnie was the first guy I met with, and I liked him immediately. I didn't meet with anybody else, and he's been with me ever since, six and a half years later. And we built the studio here, and um, you know, started building our network, Night Owl TV, and we kept the show going for Chilling with Larry Megan. We've done about a hundred episodes now. And uh, we, about 14 weeks ago, 15 weeks ago, we started a new show where we're actually selling product. So when we started doing that, we actually started generating some revenues. And we just had our best show last Thursday night. But along the way, you know, expenses start piling up. You know, you think, well, a brick and mortar store has to pay rent. When you're online, you don't have to pay any rent. It's cheaper. But not so fast, my friend. <laughs> the expenses the expenses really pile up and especially the way we're doing things and I'm more than happy to get into that but Ronnie being a computer programmer and an audio engineer and a streaming savant um, 
he has really helped as far as not only keeping the cost down, but we're, I think, I believe we're doing things that nobody in the country is doing. We are doing some unbelievable things to just, um, which I'm happy to get into, but really cut the cost. Tell me more. Well, I'm going to throw it to Ronnie, but first let me set this up. Uh, one of the major expenses, and there's been others along, other stories along the way, but we decided, you know, we went to a new, um, I don't know if you call this a CDN or not, but our streaming platform is a company called Stream Monkey, which actually I, I found them on your group, Streaming Idiots, on the Facebook page because I was unhappy with the group, the platform I was with, which was DaCast, and I know you're familiar with them. I was very unhappy with their service, and they really angered me quite a bit. And, you know, we used to use Livestream when we were doing this five, six years ago, but Livestream's fees went way up. And so, you know, and the cast was fairly affordable, but they weren't really right for us. And I went on your uh, Facebook page, Tom, and I just put a feeler out there. Anybody got some suggestions? And I got, I don't know, 10 different suggestions of companies I never heard of. And I gave them all to Ronnie. And I said, you know, figure out which one's the best one for us. And Ronnie came back with Stream Monkey. And so we start using them. And one of the things I noticed in the back end of Stream Monkey is that they've got a, uh, a preset for Roku. Now I have two Roku TVs right here in this studio. OK, um, it, you know, it's just a smart TV that, you know, it's like Internet over the TV. And I thought, well, this is interesting. You know, Ro they've got a preset for Roku. What do we have to do to get this? And we followed through the steps and everything. We hadn't done this. We had, had not done this before. And we set up a Roku channel for Night Owl TV. But we hadn't told anybody about it yet because we weren't ready to roll it out. We were still playing with it. OK. But evidently what they must have done, and I've never seen it to this day, and I, I've never got any confirmation, but what they must have done is they somehow promoted it. We put a nice, our nice logo on there for the channel board and everything. And they must have promoted it as here's a new channel that you can try or something like that, new channels or you know whatever. And all of a sudden we were on a plan, I think our plan at that time was $99 a month. Now we're up to like $2.99 a month. But in any case, at that time we were like, it was back in March or February of this year, it was like $99 a month for the, and we were getting, I think 250 or 500 megabytes of bandwidth or something like that. And all of a sudden when the bill came up at the end of the month, we owed Stream Monkey like $800. And I'm going, what, 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 what how did this happen? Okay, so I called the good, and by the way, they're really nice people over there. Nicholas is fantastic. Mindy is fantastic. They're just really always willing to help and, and talk to you and, and be there for you. And I, I talked to Nicholas, and, you know, I said, how could this happen? We didn't use this much bandwidth. We wish we used this much bandwidth. And he says, well, we, he went and looked at the analytics. We hadn't used it. And he says, what about Roku? So he, he directs me to go to Roku, and you go into their analytics, and sure enough, there was this massive spike. We had over 1,200 people install our Roku channel. Meanwhile, we hadn't even told anybody that we had a Roku channel, but over 1,200 people installed it. And I guess they might have looked at it for, who knows, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then they decided it wasn't for them or whatever, and, and some of our playlists were playing over there. So I guess the Roku usage goes back to your bandwidth on Stream Monkey. And we got this massive bill. Well, anyway, Nicholas worked it out with me. He cut it down to like 300 bucks and let me pay it out over three months or something like that. He was really nice about it. But we realized we had a real problem here. You know, we we're going to have to either kill Roku or, you know, um, just, you know, find a new way. So Ronnie found a way around it where instead of, for every $100 that it would cost on Stream Monkey, and they're very moderately priced, by the way, it costs like five bucks on Beluga. So Ronnie, why don't you take over and tell them a little bit about what Beluga is and how we, what's going on with that? Sure. Well, you know, really the fun thing about this whole Night Owl TV experiment is that, you know, Larry, he's kind of the visionary where, you know, we'll be coming into the studio to get ready for a show. And Larry goes, well, you know, comes up with a crazy idea. How would we get this to happen with this? Or, you know, how would we get a studio in L.A. and, and bring it here? And how can we see them? How can they see us? And, you know, he'll, he'll bring me these ideas with no concept of thinking that it, it's doable or there's a software that already does that. Just, hey, can this be done? 
And then uh, a lot of the time, the fun part is that I get to create these uh, these different things from scratch. So, you know, how do we do something that's never been done? Well, let's sit down and try to figure it out. So when it comes to these online streaming services, you know, in a big way, you're just paying them. They're reselling you bandwidth. So, you know, you go to live stream or you go to Stream Monkey, and they're charging you for a really nice front end, a really nice user experience. But, you know, they're just reselling you all, the, all that bandwidth at a retail price. So we're looking at it and saying, how do we get it at wholesale? How do we get it straight at the cost? How do we cut the cost down? And what we came across is a company called DigitalOcean and another company called Beluga. And what those companies are, DigitalOcean is a server company. So what we do is for five bucks a month, and you could even do it for, I think it's about 10, you know, a uh, tenth of a cent per hour if you just want to do it hourly we keep it on for the whole month it's only five bucks and we set up our own streaming server so you know there's a lot of service uh, infrastructure like Wowza we use something called Nginx where what we're able to do is stream through that server for just five bucks a month now you know we still use Stream Monkey for different things like archiving the videos and the different interfaces that they have but when we have something that we need to get our feed from one place to another for a very cheap price we sign up and do this DigitalOcean so with DigitalOcean you know we can have our own streaming service anytime we want to and you know the next piece of that is what happens when you have a thousand people that want to see your stream what happens if you have 10,000 people? Well, one little $5 server, that's not really Happens to me all the time. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's the dream, right? And uh, so Beluga, you know, they're a, a CDN, content delivery network. It's a lot like, um, you know, Amazon has one of these. There's Mac CDN, Akamai, a lot of these companies out there. And Beluga, I don't know how they do it, but they offer the service starting at five bucks a month. You know, they're a fraction of the price of these big guys like Akamai or Amazon. And, you know, we went from, like Larry was saying, eight, nine hundred bucks a month to do Roku through a typical provider. We put that through Beluga, and we're still at five bucks a month, and it really saved our uh, saved our wallet. Ronnie, g give us a double shot here. You know, uh, just to kind of clarify that a little bit, because I know when Ronnie says it, it's it's uh, it comes out like everyone understands. But what we did, or what Ronnie did, was he took the RSS feed intended for Roku from Stream Monkey, and he sent it to Beluga, and then from Beluga. He's now taking the RSS feed from there and then sending that to Roku. So the Roku usage is actually being billed on Beluga instead of being billed from Stream Monkey. Right. And and like I said, the the rate is like five cents on the dollar compared yeah. to Stream Monkey. And it allowed us to really keep our Roku channel. And um, you know, I mean it's a it's a lifesaver. But that to me is which is incredible as it is is not the greatest thing that Ronnie has done or that we have done, but that is certainly at the top three or four. Well, so what you've done is if you, is you have just out you've just outlined a strategy of using Roku essentially for five dollars a month. I mean that that just that blows up so many other competing products it's just not even it's not even fair you guys shouldn't be allowed to, to do that uh, we yeah. might be up to about 20 or 25 dollars a month on uh, beluga oh, right now but oh, that would terrible. still be so much that would be <laughs> a lot on uh on stream monkey yep. yeah if you got a bill for would you say it was 800 dollars in one month and the thing about it was we didn't even promote the channel. Right. We didn't even tell anybody yet. We weren't ready. So anybody out there watching the show, if you do set up a Roku channel, be sure before you activate it that you're ready because somehow they promote it or they put it in new channels and people see it and they say, well, let's see what this is, especially if you have an attractive logo. You know, right. they say, oh, that looks interesting and you have a nice description. And we had that, but we didn't, we weren't really sure how it worked yet. And before we knew what happened, they promoted it. We had over 1,200 installs in one day. And, you know, you think, oh, wow, that's great. 1,200 people installed my channel on Roku. That's incredible. We didn't, you know, expect that. The truth is over 800 people uninstalled it within a day. So we were left with about, because we weren't ready for it. Right. It wasn't completely set up right. 
Right. But nevertheless, the, all those people watching it for five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, a half hour, it caused all this usage on um, Stream Monkey. And, you know, the guy there was very understanding. He was totally cool. He, like, cut $500 off of it. He gave me three months to pay. And I was I couldn't be more ha more than happy with that, you know. Right. But uh, and then we found a way around it. Uh, one of the more recent ones, actually the most recent uh, workaround we did, was over transcoding. Uh, one of the um, big issues that we've had, and I think recently you've been talking about transcoding, Tom. I think. But um, for those that don't know what transcoding is, you send out a signal, and we like to send the big one, right? 1080. Oh yeah, we like the high. You quality. know, we've got 33,000 upload speed here, and. 300,000 download. We pay a lot for that. But, you know, so we like to send a big signal. However, the problem, and we've had, we had many complaints from customers, not complaints, but calls saying, all I'm getting is the circle that's kind of, you know, buffering all the time. They can't handle 1920 uh, by 1080. Okay. So then I guess that leaves us with the option of, well, let's just lower the resolution. Well, you know, I don't really want to lower the resolution. We bought these incredible uh, HD cameras. We put in the lighting for it. We want to send a, a sharp picture. Well, then the answer is you got to take that one signal and transcode it into three or four different levels. I think you send out five, Tom, on YouTube, um, all the way down to 144. And so I called Stream Monkey about this, and they have a transcoding service that if we send them one signal... They will convert it into four or five signals, you know, at, at a lesser, um, you know, resolution. But they charge $149 a month on top of our regular fee to do the transcoding. And I mean, I, for a half a minute, I was thinking, God, is it worth it? You know, should we do it? You know, I don't know, man, that's a lot of money. I mean, I'm not made of money. You know, we're, we're operating in the red here. And Ronnie came up with a workaround, okay, which is amazing. So, Ronnie, uh, and so now we're doing it, and it works great. You want to tell them about it? Sure. Well, you know, it, it all goes back to that NGINX on DigitalOcean. They're really our secret sauce. You know, DigitalOcean, uh, again, they've got the $5 a month server that's a basic, simple server. But you can bump that up as high as you want. So what we ended up doing, you know, some providers will do it for you. I think, uh, like, Livestream, Google, they'll do that transcoding. They'll eat the cost, essentially, of doing that. But some smaller providers like Stream Monkey, who we use, they charge us to do that transcoding. So what we did is we built our own transcoder. So we uh, went onto the DigitalOcean again and bumped this one up. Instead of five bucks a month, this is ten bucks an hour. So it's uh, quite a bit more expensive of a server, but it's far more powerful. And what we're able to do is using that. I thought that it was a dollar an hour or two dollars an hour. Uh, you might be right. I thought it was more like ten bucks an hour, but well, we're all on for I like twelve is, or thirteen hours, and it was yeah, like a buck an hour. I thought that's right. Ten bucks a show. A that's show. What I'm thinking of not yeah. an hour. Yeah, it's six hundred forty bucks a month, but we only do it for you know, one show a week. So right, a right. dollar an hour. Yeah, so it's like uh, ten or thirteen bucks a, sh uh, a show because yep. we run we run our replay of our show for about twelve hours. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we run it all night long. So in any case, what we do is we uh, stream through our normal channel where you know we're sending out a stream. Even before StreamMonkey, we're still hitting our, our DigitalOcean server. That's kind of our intermediary, which handles all our feeding from there. And then at that point, we can send that stream anywhere we want to. So we could send it to uh, Facebook if we wanted to. We could send it to really anywhere, YouTube or you name it. And what we've done there is we've had that server create a high quality medium. We're doing four qualities all the way down to a very low quality. And this is sending it all back to Stream Monkey. And then we're basically what we're doing is handling the transcoding on our end. So rather than paying them to do it, we're taking care of all that, just sending them the package, and then all they do is distribute that package. Right. And let me add one more thing to that, Ronnie. Um, what, what I think you kind of maybe glossed over uh, is maybe you think it's a given. But to me, the amazing part of this is, well, you can't just send the signal to, to DigitalOcean and expect the trans transcoding to happen. There is free software out there called, was it FFMPG? Yep. Correct. FFMPG, yep. and evidently from what Ronnie tells me, is this FFMPG software is the same software that 
that that Stream Monkey would use or any other company would use. It's free. It's inside of vMix, matter of fact. It's inside it's of, one of the it, cornerstones. It's called FFMPG. It's completely free. This is what everybody uses, and then they charge you for the service for using this free software. And so what Ronnie did is took the free software and he installed it on our server on DigitalOcean, and he sends the signal to the free software on DigitalOcean, the high signal, and it sends then four, we're we sending four or five? We're doing four. Okay, we're doing four, probably could do five if we if wanted. We wanted sure. If we really wanted to, we could do five. Then that is then transcoding that and sending four signals to Stream Monkey. So Stream Monkey doesn't charge us for transcoding. We're set, we were going to DigitalOcean anyway, so there's no extra, there might be a little extra you know, latency issue. But it's free software, and now we're doing it for free instead of paying them one hundred and forty-nine dollars a month, and that's the latest uh, workaround that we had. Mm -hmm. I, I think Tom? Ronnie is easily worth a dollar a pound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, depends whose weight you're talking about. If it's my weight, it's, it's pretty close because I need to lose about a hundred. Uh, you know. But uh, it's just amazing to me that some of this stuff is free, like FFMPG, and then people are, that's what they're using to charge you, you know. Before Ronnie came up with that solution, I started kind of calling around to companies, and there was one I think called Restream, mm -hmm, yep. you know, and they were telling me what a great deal theirs was and all that. They're using the same software, and it would have cost still a lot more money, and they're, they're nice guys, and they're probably competitive with everybody else. But a lot of this stuff is out there for free. Now, again, I couldn't do this without Ronnie because he's a programmer. You know, he knows how to do this stuff. To me, Tom, and I don't know how we're doing on time, but the most amazing thing that I feel that we did was uh, the uh, the L.A. studio, yeah. okay? Yep. I wanted to have an association or a sister studio in Los Angeles. Now, we did this last December, and it really was remarkable. Um, and we were probably, I was probably being a little too ambitious thinking that we're gonna do our very first show. We spent three or four months, or even five months, building the studio, getting it ready before we did our first live show, this this go around with Night Owl TV. And um, I thought, let's do the first one from Los Angeles. And it was important to me to have a sister studio in LA because that gives you more potential for guests. There's more uh, potential guests for myself in LA. And I thought, well, we don't have to use it every week, but maybe we use it once a month. You know, there's musicians and actors and things like this. Um, and I don't want to bring them in by Skype, you know? I mean, we can, and we've done plenty of guests by Skype, but I'd really like to have a, a studio. So I went out there and through some friends of mine, you know, I'm originally from LA, I moved out of there in 2004. One of my friends referred me to a small green screen studio in Beverly Hills, okay? It was a converted dentist office, but it's a nice little studio with three SDI cameras, a green screen, they've got a little talk show set, and it was nice. And, and the uh, owner of it, the lady who owns it, she gave me a good deal, okay? Uh, basically $300 a show, and, the, and she would have her manager open it up f for three hours. And so I could have my classic film zone correspondent who lives in L.A., she could go there when, when we do a, a studio shot in L.A., and we could have the guest in the studio together. Now we went, And they have what's called a TriCaster, okay? And I heard a lot about TriCasters, and everybody tells me the TriCaster is the mecca and you know this is for big time production companies and they can cost $20,000 or more or things like this and I guess that's for big time guys not for guys like me okay so they got a TriCaster and we can get this studio for 300 bucks uh, for three hours you know starting at uh, uh, 7 o'clock to 10 p.m. because uh, we go late at night so the first and it was our first show and it was probably too ambitious we did this show and I got to tell you out of 100 shows we've done going back five, six years when we used to be called Acorn TV, it was by far the biggest train wreck we ever had. I mean, it was absolutely horrible. It was so bad that I thought, you know what, I'm done, let's quit, I can't do this anymore. Um, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And one of the big issues with it was the audio was messed up, but also with their TriCaster, we have to rely on that studio manager out there to mix the shots. They've got a three camera shoot with two guests. So you have a solo shot on this one, a solo shot on that one, and then a double shot with the two of them. So he mixes the shots as he sees fit, and the TriCaster sends out one stream, and we pull that into vMix, okay? And we mix that, and I'm anchoring the show here in Minneapolis. I'm anchoring here, we're putting the video clips in from here, any still shots. So we're controlling the show here, but we're pulling in one signal from LA with three cameras. Well, unless you have perfect communication, 
And even with perfect communication, you're going to have issues. If he switches from, you know, person one to person two, and you've got the graphic up there saying this is Susan, and he switches to Paul, the graphic says Susan. So, you know, and, and that kind of stuff really bothers me. It's very unprofessional. I don't like to have those kind of mistakes. It was a nightmare. And so the next night, you know, I got some great encouragement from people that were in the show saying, don't worry, it's going to get better. It was the first show. It's, you know, I asked Ronnie to come over for dinner and let's go through the show and let's make notes about how we can improve all these problems that we had. And I made it very clear with to Ronnie. And I know Ronnie felt the same way. I mean, he was Ronnie gets more disgusted with errors than I do. Um, and I said, you know, Ronnie, I don't want to do this from L.A. ever again unless we can have a separate stream from each camera. I don't want to rely on that guy to mix our shots, okay? I want each camera to come into vMix, and we can mix our own show the way we want to mix it, period. And he just said to me, Larry, the TriCaster can't do that. It sends out one stream. I said, well, I said, would it, could it work if we, if we sent them three computers and we plugged each computer into, you know, we, we put a, a, you know, the black magic card in three single black magic cards into three small computers and then from each computer send the uh you know the um ethernet cable into the modem and send three streams and he said well yeah he said that would work except if you really want to do that we can do it with one computer and get another decklink duo card each one has its own stream id number i said will it wall off the stream from bleeding into the he says yeah so i said let's do it and ronnie built a computer and it's maybe a little bit bigger than a cigar box. It's not a not like our streamer here that you need a forklift to get this thing out of here. But in any case, it was a little bigger than a, than a than a cigar box. It's got the Decklink Duo card, which, by the way, we have two of them in the streamer here. We're using five of the eight uh, inputs, and it's got four inputs, as you know, Tom. It costs five hundred bucks. We got all, so, and I use my daughter in LA as she lives in LA. I use her as our kind of a location coordinator. She will unplug the cameras from the TriCaster and plug them into, we call it the No TV Broadcaster, okay? Because for Night Owl TV, she plugs them into the, to the you know, to the uh, SDI inputs from the uh, Decklink Duo card and the audio feed as well. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie has it programmed that computer to shoot to Digital Ocean in New York. And then from Digital Ocean, we pull those streams into VMix, and now we have all the cameras here. We mix our own shows. We've got the audio. The hardest thing Ronnie said about that, which and when the, we got the and Ronnie had to sit there and do the programming and finally get the cameras to come up and come up, and we saw him pop in on uh, VMix. I, I was shocked. I couldn't even believe that we're doing this. And um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, Ronnie said the hardest thing about it was not so much building the computer, but he had he knew he said I knew I was going to have to program the the belly of that computer, get into the guts. So I had to build a tunnel. I don't know why that was so hard. He can tell you. But he built a tunnel so we could sit here in Minneapolis, and I think he's bouncing off the server in New York and then into the belly of the computer in L.A., and he's programming that computer from sitting here. Okay? What do you say, Ronnie? Yeah. Well, you know, I can tell you what was so hard about it is basically, you know, we've got this box. It's taking these signals, bouncing it out to New York. And that's all fine if it works. But the problem with productions is nothing ever works exactly like you plan. So you've got to dig in there. You've got to unplug things, plug things back in. And, you know, we're, we're using a Linux software. We're using FFMPG. We're using custom servers. It's not real easy to explain to someone else how to troubleshoot what you're trying to troubleshoot. So what we needed was a tunnel. We have to be able to log into that computer and make the changes we need to make. Now, what's hard about that is when you log a computer onto the Internet, your IP is always going to change unless you've got what's called a static IP. And even if you had one static IP for your whole studio, you'd have to configure that specific router to route it to that computer. It's not very easy to actually log into that computer. So what we had to do was set up a tunnel where what we're doing is connecting that computer. As soon as it turns on, it's connecting right to the digital ocean in New York. And then what we're able to do is through DigitalOcean tunnel into that computer is what they call it to where we can pull that computer up and we're right here in the studio typing away and it's like we were sitting in LA typing straight into that computer. That's awesome. And so that's what we yeah. have to do. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, what I, one thing I learned from that experience, Tom, is, you know, all these guys who jump up and down over a TriCaster, I got to tell you, I'm not impressed. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing, but we said, screw the TriCaster, let's just bypass it. Okay, and that's what we did. Uh, we just bypassed it, and um, like I bought my daughter a, uh, I, I bought a uh, what they call an Air Pelican case, so she brings whatever equipment, including that computer, each time we do a show from L.A. You know, and she plugs it in, and and we get all three camera feeds. Awesome, awesome. It doesn't this feel like the Wild Wild West? I mean, you know, you just oh yeah, you, <laughs> you're you're. you're you're going into territory that that nobody's been in before. You're you're creating things that haven't been created before, or you're taking two or three technologies and you're you're blending them together to create something that that hadn't previously existed to solve a problem. I just I love what you guys are doing. I really do. I'm so excited about well, it. Well, can you see why I say Ronnie's not really my assistant? You know, I'm kind of <laughs> like his assistant. But yeah, I had it backwards, didn't I? Gee whiz. Sorry about that, Ronnie. So I'll, I'll have Sorry. to change the name on the check, Ronnie. You, you're the one getting the check today, not Larry. That's good. That's good because he needs to get paid from somebody. Well, guys, we, yeah, we, we are over time, but I'm hoping you guys will hang out for just a few more minutes in the post show. Um, sure. And so that everybody watching live will hang on for a few more minutes in the post show. And for those of you that are not watching live, you got to watch live so you get the whole show. Uh, c come yeah. on back. All right, so so we're gonna we're gonna cut these guys out for just a second, and um, and and we will go back to just me for just a second. Sorry about the tech problems earlier. And you know it was kind of interesting. Uh, Larry said to me as as we were getting ready, to actually talking earlier about the show. He said, "Oh, I'm gonna have Ronnie on." And I was like, "Oh." Everything I had set up was for 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 me and a guest, not me and two guests. So we had to scramble a bit at the last minute. That's why our lower thirds and and all that stuff was kind of kind of, I would say weird. You know, amateurish. That's better, amateurish. Hey, look, thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you you watching today. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube after the fact, we hope you'll subscribe. I mean, heck, if you've if you've watched this long into the show, you may as well just subscribe. And if I can help you with anything, shoot me an email, Tom at EasternShoreBroadcasting.com. I'm happy to, to get you pointed in the right direction. And there may be some products in our, our store that can help you as well. We will see you next week when we have um, Dan Mile from Bird Dog TV on to talk about the Bird Dog device that uh, is shaking up the industry. So um, watching live, don't go away. If you're watching uh, on YouTube, we will see you next week. Uh, take care. We'll be back in just a second with the, the post show. <laughs>